good happy Tuesday evening, December 8, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening, so let's begin. First step, COVID-19 updates. New Hampshire COVID information, new updates and data. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 25,000 816 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 14,888,471 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 566 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 849 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 283, 326 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 832. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 4602. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases. Orange, new hospitalization and red deaths. Now let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Total current COVID-19 cases and an orange current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, orange total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate and daily PCR tests. Let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases, female and male cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And let's take a look at this chart here. Your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. North Conway Hospital shifts COVID-19 testing off-site aimed increased demand. Drop in COVID-19 testing at hospital's emergency department no longer offered. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hirschberger. With shovels, thermal gloves, and portable heaters all on sale through December 31st. Shop one of our nine locations safely. Order by phone or shop online at Beltates.com. Count on Beltates. Memorial Hospital in North Conway will no longer be offering drop-in COVID-19 testing at their emergency department. Starting Thursday, anyone who wants just the test and not to be seen by a physician will be directed to their nearby coronavirus testing center. The goal is to free up the emergency room staff to be able to take care of emergency department patients. Continue to test everyone who needs to be tested. There will be a screening process in the, in the testing center for uh, patients who are symptomatic. Will Owen says in early November they were testing about 60 to 70 people per day for COVID-19 with symptomatic cases being done in the emergency room and asymptomatic cases in the testing center. But by the beginning of December, those daily testing numbers more than doubled, putting a strain on the emergency department. One example is we had 45 plus cars roughly show up in the emergency department in a short period of time. All looking just to be tested, uh, did not want to go in and actually be seen by a provider. Owen says while they only have one hospitalization, they are preparing for the future. With Christmas and New Year's coming, us being a destination resort for skiing, scary as getting the weather to finally blow snow, we're going to see more people coming. And so, yeah, there is absolutely a concern and we're, we're preparing and watching closely. 
Owen says the test results can take up to 72 hours, but most are back the same day. Reporting live, Mandy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man faces negligent homicide charges in Rochester crash that killed two people. Joshua McCarthy also charged with witness tampering and falsifying physical evidence. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Well, winter's here. So what? Mahindra, the official tractor of tough, doesn't slow. A Rochester man is charged with negligent homicide and witness tampering in a September crash that killed two people. Police say Joshua McCarthy was turning onto Washington Street in Rochester when he collided with the vehicle carrying James and Suzanne Hughes. They both died. McCarthy and the passengers in his car survived. But today, investigators announced those charges as well as accounts of falsifying physical evidence. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Portsmouth may push back plastic and styrofoam bans for two years. Portsmouth ordinance that would ban distribution of single-use plastic on city land and styrofoam containers citywide may be delayed for two years due to COVID-19. With new GOP leadership, New Hampshire posed to use federal funds to double state charter schools. If the state doubles the number of charter schools students, 17 million in state education aid will leave the traditional public school system, Saucy said, since the overall overhead cost to a school district will not decrease along with the state aid. The 17 million will likely have to be raised locally by property tax based on our current funding model. Concord High School raising money for Capital Regional Food Program. Staff and students are hoping to raise 10000 to help provide 2,000 area families with a holiday meal and food for two weeks. Each year, the Concord High School students and educators, as well as others, gather for food, gather food for the Capital Regional Food Program. The program has, for close to five decades, provided food for those in need, as well as the special holiday food basket project. But this year, everything is different due to the coronavirus, and the program is not accepting food donations, even though there are still residents of the Concord and Capital Region in need of assistance. This year, Concord High School is attempting to raise 10000 to assist the organization. Last year, more than 8000 was collected to, so the extra 2000 will assist in making up a bit of a difference for those in need. One of the organizers said they have a commitment from several people who are paying the processing fee for GoFundMe.com in order to ensure that 100% of the contributions will go to the Capital Food Bank program. So far, the school community has raised more than 3,000 from 57 donors. For more information, Visit the CHS is raising funds for foodgofundme.com site. 
Popeye's restaurant is opening in Manchester very soon. Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Restaurant is making final preparations to open on South Willis Street and is hiring 50 to 60 people. The first Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Restaurant is preparing to open very soon in Manchester at 716 South Willow Street. The 3,225 square foot restaurant is located at the former location of a Pizza Hut restaurant. The company sold the building for $1.5 million to a limited liability company that is the franchise owner that will operate the Manchester restaurant. The same franchise owner operates the Salem and Portland, Maine locations as well as several Popeye restaurants in Massachusetts. Operations Manager Howard said Popeye's in Manchester will have seating for 50 people inside the restaurant and a drive through that has became a popular choice at their other restaurants during the COVID-19 pandemic, according to Howard. They are expecting the Manchester Popeyes to open on December 15th. The restaurant is now hiring people to staff the Manchester restaurant. Howard said they expect to hire 50 to 60 people for positions which are full and part-time positions. People can text P.N. Popeyes to 242424 to apply for jobs online and schedule virtual interviews. Popeyes, which was founded in 1972 as Chicken on the Run in New Orleans, has grown substantially since their franchise started in 1976. The chain best known for its fried chicken, red beans and rice, and biscuit, and operates 2,600 locations. Popeye's chicken sandwich gained so much popularity during the last year that people were standing in lines before the stores opened to get sandwiches before they ran out. Currently, the popular sandwich is readily available. On the Popeye's website, it's described it as a tender, all-white meat chicken breast fulfilled, marinated, an authentic blend of Louisiana seasonings, hand-breaded, and breaded in buttermilk coating. Served with pickle, classic, or spicy mayonnaise, and served on a warm and toasted buttery bun. That sounds yummy! And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye, everyone.